Good morning. Welcome to Light in the Darkness. Today, we're going to have a great time together. And wherever you're watching from, as always, let us know, comment below. And if today blesses you, share it with someone else. We always want to tell people about some good news in a dark world. And today, I wanted to talk to you about the power of prayer. Now, I want to come at a different angle. So hang in with us for the next few minutes because I believe it's going to bless you. Because prayer is something God wants you to have in your life, but it should never ever be seen as a burden. God never asks you to do something to give you a burden. In fact, when Jesus says, hey, I'm here so that I can give you an easy, light life. He wasn't meaning your circumstances might never experience difficulty. He was saying, as you face circumstances on this earth, it doesn't have to burden you. Why? Because my burden is light. Why? Because humanity's burden is heavy, but Jesus took our burden on himself and he gave us his burden. So prayer should never be perceived to be something that is a burden to us. Well, pastor, what do you mean? Well, have you ever thought of prayer as a task or a duty? Have you ever thought, wow, I prayed for five minutes and then you hear somebody else says, today I prayed for an hour. And the first thought you have is, oh my goodness, I only prayed for five minutes. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't done enough. My prayers don't matter. God's looking down at earth going, how can you only pray for five minutes when they pray for an hour? And then you go and you pray for an hour. You've got the clock up in your room and you watch it tick by and praying, you're praying, you're thinking and you're praying and you're praying. And then you get to an hour and you're like, sure, I made it to an hour. God's going to be impressed with me. And then you hear somebody else says they prayed for three hours. Sometimes you have people who pray all night and you think, oh my goodness, I can't do that. Now what's happened? Prayer has become a burden. It's not a blessing. Actually, everything God gives us is supposed to be a burden remover. Prayer is never meant to burden you. It is meant to take burden from you. It is meant to make you feel light, easy, right? So look at this. In uh, We're going to go to Philippians, actually, chapter 4, verses 6. And it says here, be anxious for nothing. Now, why is it saying be anxious for nothing? Because there's a lot to be anxious about. I don't know if you can relate, but I think when, when this was written, I'm like, you, you were writing to the Corona 2020 year. You were writing to the COVID-19 crisis because there is a lot to be anxious about. A lot. Not just your safety, not just, uh, you know, your, 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 whether you're going to get sick or not, which we believe God's a healer, but, but you have other stuff. You have stresses, you have financial burdens, you have decisions to make, you have people to lead, you have companies to work for, you have, deci- you know, you have a lot. So there's a lot to be anxious about because there's a lot of burden. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Well, how am I supposed to be anxious for nothing when there's so much to be anxious about? I can't just live in denial and, and ignorance. I have to deal with my life. I have to face things. Well, the Bible says, but in everything, With prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Prayer is not a gateway to ask God for stuff, right? In Philippians 4, 6, it says, you pray and you let God know what you're facing right? You say to God, I'm anxious about this. I'm struggling with that. But I give thanks that you know what I face. And today I'm open for you to speak into the situation. And you know what God says? I've got it handled. I've got it handled. In other words, his peace doesn't come to you because he gives you more stuff. His peace comes to you because he gives you security, You are safe and sound in my hands, my child. Don't be anxious. I've got you in the palm of my hands. And as you pray, you give your cares, your stresses to him. He has to figure it out. He has to help you. He has to be God. And what's the exchange of my problems in my prayer? God, I'm going to give this to you is I receive his peace that surpasses all understanding because his peace is not about things and stuff and situations and circumstances. God's peace is greater than that. Jesus was able to sleep 
on a boat in the middle of a boat sinking storm. And the type of boats that Jesus was in were not great boats with deep holes and, and cabins and rooms underneath. Some of you have seen animated movies about Jesus sleeping in the storm. And it almost appears like Jesus is down in this warm little uh, cabin underneath this in this big wooden boat. And the disciples come down and you see something rolling around in the background. Or you might see how the ship is swaying next to where Jesus is sleeping. And even sometimes there's a candle or something there. And it's like, oh, he's so dry and he's not aware what's going on outside. That is not the boat he slept on. The boat that he slept on would look today like a rowing boat, like a fishing vessel for, for 10 people with nothing covering up anything. It's totally exposed. And it doesn't tell us Jesus slept in the hole, which is in a fictitious room at the bottom of the boat. It says he slept at the helm. In other words, the place where the captain sits, most exposed to the water. He was sleeping. Jesus had waves crashing on him. He had the wind blowing through his hair, the storm screeching. He could have heard the lightning. He would have been getting wet through the waves and the storm and the rain, totally exposed to the elements. And he's sleeping. How can he sleep and rest? Because Jesus knows God's got it under control. So when the disciples wake him up, we're drowning, we're drowning, right? What was the difference between the disciples and Jesus? The peace of God, the deeper revelation and understanding. The peace of God surpasses human understanding. That's what the scripture says. The peace of God that surpasses human understanding will be yours to do what? God, your heart and your mind. Right now, prayer is not about going, God, I uh, um, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong. No, no, God knows what's wrong, but he wants you to give it to him and receive his peace that is above the understanding that says it's not about knowing how this is going to get fixed out. It's about knowing that he's going to take care of it. And you know what? It guards your heart and it guards your mind. It produces protection. It gives you rest. It gives you peace. It allows your mind to find rest and peace because you have positioned your need in his hands. You know, Jesus, when he was walking on the earth, it tells us he did this, right? In Luke chapter five, verses 16, there's a whole crowd tugging at Jesus that needs Jesus, that's asking for Jesus. And he withdraws from the crowd into the wilderness to pray. He does that because he needs to connect with the Lord. He needs to just go, God, I, I'm not making this about the need. You know, for some of you, you have so much need around you. Kids, people, friends, family, co-workers. Everyone says, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. Help, help, help. Here's my problem. Here's my issue. You know what? You need to get alone with the Lord and pray because pray centers you in his peace and it allows you to be led by his understanding. Prayer Wow, it's power. And there is power in prayer. God wants you living your life connected to His peace, His understanding led by Him. Why? Because it'll allow you to guard your heart and your mind. And the truth is, it will. He will take care of it. He will take care of it. That's why we can give thanks. Lord, I know you're good. You've never let me down this far. You'll take care of me in the future. So we're going to come to God right now in prayer and receive communion together for our need and receive peace that guards our hearts and minds and lets us know with thanksgiving, he's taking care of everything. So we're going to take this bread and this cup and this juice and we're going to speak over it. And we're going to receive all that Jesus has done for us. We're going to burden the Lord with our burdens. Father, we thank you that your body was broken for us. We thank you, Jesus, that you literally earned healing for us at the cross. Through your stripes, we are healed. And today we burden the Lord with every health, every stress burden for our bodies. And we declare as Jesus's body was broken, we are mended and made whole. Thank you, Lord, for healing and wholeness as we break this and we receive your body unto our bodies. Healing is ours in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Jesus' blood declares us an inheritor of his peace. You know, when Jesus said, 
I leave my peace to you. He actually used the language through my death. I bequeath my peace, the peace that allows me to sleep in a storm that is yours through my death. Why? Because we have a relationship with God like Christ has with God on righteousness, right standing. So as we receive today, we reflect and we meditate and we place our burdens on you, Lord. We give them to you, God, and we trust knowing that as you have made us righteous, you have us in the palm of your hands taking care of us. We receive today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on Light in the Darkness. If today blessed you, share it with people. Until we see you again, be blessed.